It is the third or the fourth Saturday in May. Uh, not really sure. I know you can't see my head right now. YouTube. It's my first time out in a canoe this season, so I'm pretty excited about that. Just remembering all my paddle strokes and got the canoe loaded up for a few different things today. So Pike is open. Thought I'd cast a few spoons, troll some spoons for Pike. Um, and I'm gonna try and uh, check a few creeks today to see if the suckers are running. I've been trying to catch a sucker run for a few years now and I keep missing it. Sometimes I'm down in uh, Grenada on a school trip at the key time of year. Um, everything's kind of running maybe a little bit late this year so I think it's going to work out to catch a sucker run hopefully and uh, the other thing I want to do is pick some fiddleheads so I'm out at some old stomping grounds uh, where I know there's a fiddlehead patch of ostrich ferns and a few good creeks with uh, a likely sucker run and that's my day and we're in a bit of a heat wave here right now for this time of year anyway it's uh 27 degrees Celsius today, I think. Um, a little bit breezy though, which is nice. Black flies have started. Got my head net uh, with me, but not on right now on the lake. And looking forward to a day on the water, a day on the land, and a little bit of foraging. So here's the first week I wanted to check. I don't really see anything going on. Uh, I checked it a few times earlier for smelts because I've heard they run here, but I didn't find them. And I've been here a few times already for uh, looking for suckers. I uh, have not seen them yet either. And it looks like that's still the case today, so I'll get back out into the lake and uh, drop a spoon behind me. I'm gonna head over that way. Look at what a beautiful day it is. Pike regulations here, you can keep, uh, I can't remember if you can keep five or six. You can keep two over 24 inches and one over 34 inches. Uh, so I got my measuring tape with me and see if I have to use it or not. Gansers on the river here. This is the smaller river that is past the confluence. Uh, there's lots of little sandpipers on the river. I saw one guy in a kayak. Um, and uh, two guys in a little aluminum boat came out of the main river as I was coming in. So it's pretty quiet out here. A nice sandy beach here. It's great because you can come around, have a look at the tracks, see who's been cruising around. There's a wolf track here, or a coyote, and then a raccoon track here. Sometimes we see moose tracks or deer tracks. And the uh, rocky part of the river with all the flow. Oh, there's those mergansers. The rocky part with the flow is just over here. It's a pretty river, eh? So the guy in the kayak, he saw some bass, he saw some pike. Uh, he couldn't get anything to bite. Probably because the water temperature is still cool. And uh, because of that, I was kind of hoping that I'd get here and there'd just be black clouds of suckers everywhere, but it doesn't look like it. Well, that's all right. Because this is also where the um, ostrich fern fiddle patch, fiddlehead patch is. So I have a little rest after all my canoeing. I'm going to enjoy the river here and then uh, just pop up through the bush and check on the state of the fiddleheads here. I picked some with Delphine at another spot, a different river, uh, yesterday. And those ones were kind of at prime picking 
with um, lots of small, small ones just getting ready to come up to... Oh, here we are. Here's an ostrich friend. Um, sporophytes. We might call them the seed tops. Although they are not a seeded plant. Let's just crash down here and have a look. So, these guys are on the shady side. And... Not sporophyte tops, but... The um, fiddleheads. They're just, just small yet in this spot anyway. So we'll have a look at the other spot. See what's happening there. This purple trillium, right beside some ostrich fern fiddleheads. So my strategy is just to pick one from each cluster. So there's one. There's some here that are getting a little bit big. I'll pick the uh, small one down there. And where did I see? Oh yeah, right here. Another nice bunch of them. Just take those brown papers off them. I'll probably cook those up tonight. Maybe with a northern pike if I have any luck fishing, although the guy said they weren't biting yet, but we'll see what happens. There's an oxbow in the river here, where the river carved out a new channel. See this old corner is just kind of left stagnant, but seems to be a hot spot for toads. And every once in a while I'll jump a puddle duck out of here. I didn't remember this one before, but uh, noticing today there's a lot of cow parsnip. And can't really remember what part of that plant is edible, if it's the flower stalk or these fresh leaf shoots. So I'll have to refresh my memory when I get home, check my books. Um, maybe make a little note on my foraging map, because there is quite a bit of it around here. And here's a little patch of another fern species. Comes up and it's got this uh, paper on it. Or sorry, not paper, but um, fluff. I can't remember. I'm going to have to look that up, but it might be the uh, maiden's hair fern. Or uh, maybe it's the cinnamon fern. Oh, green frog calling with those toads. Lots of life in this little corner. So this one there. There's some uh, stinging nettle here too. I didn't see that out here the other times that I've been out, so I'll have to keep my eyes peeled now that I've seen it. See if there's enough of that to harvest as well. Kind of an odd thing to find lying around out here. An old aluminum kettle. But it's on a historical canoe route and I think there used to be a logging camp near here back in the day and lots of current canoe traffic, so find all kinds of weird things. There's the nearby lake. Just heard a big, big, big thump from 
the direction of my canoe. So I'm going to head back over that way. There's still lots of picking here. But I also don't want something to run off with my buckets or my cooler. You know, if a bear found that, that wouldn't be cool. So, better go see what's going on. Hmm. Thought I heard something over there. Now I'm just a little bit on edge, I guess. Could be anything out here. I did see some moose tracks in the sand. Deer tracks, wolf tracks. I guess what I should do anyway is uh, bring my canoe around to that bay on the lake because it's actually closer to my uh, picking spot and then all my stuff's nearby. I never really thought about it, but um, bear season's open. I should have uh, printed my license and brought my rifle just in case I saw one on the riverbank or in the bush. You never know, right? Opportunity favors the prepared mind. Isn't that what they say? I wasn't prepared. Where's my canoe over there? I don't know what that noise would have been. Um, now that I've walked over here, it might have been between me and the canoe. So probably something in the bush. It's not really breezy enough for branches to be falling or anything like that. Something's around. Anyway, we'll hop in the canoe and uh, go back around to that fiddle patch. Fiddle head patch. I'll show you, uh, there's a deer print there. And then over here, there's a deer print here and a moose track. Here, a little older, probably well, not from today or yesterday, but and some coyote toe prints or a wolf or a kingfisher. Lots of critters. So this is kind of interesting. As I paddled in here, right on the edge of the weeds, there were three, you know, eating-sized pike. But as I got in real shallow here where it's only a few inches deep um, I scared up a few dozen bass and pumpkin seed so I guess the pike have pushed them in real close and uh, you can see some bass and pumpkin seeds right there cruising around just in uh, six or eight inches of water so I guess they're trying to keep away from all those pike out there which means maybe the pike are biting. Anyhow, this is where I was picking, so I'm kind of back to my spot, but my canoe's closer by, and I'm gonna keep at it. Well, there's a few pounds in there, and a nice little bird's nest. And I noticed there's still lots of bass and pumpkin seed in the really shallow water here. So I'm gonna rig up a spoon and a wire leader and I'm going to cast back out to where I saw those pike and uh, see if I can get a strike from them. Because I think all these little fish are hiding here because they're out there. Oh, there's a toad right there, somewhere. Well, let's see. Put on a... Why well, do they have a leader attached to a uh, blue and white spoon here? So maybe I'll give that a try. And if I don't get any strikes on that, I've got a blue and silver Rapala. 
So this should be quick to rig up. And see if we catch a fish. Uh, I think I got a strike, but I think I'm also hung up here. So I guess we're going to launch. And let's see what I'm stuck on. I noticed there was a, uh, a really old feed pile in there from beavers. Uh, so I might have hooked up on. I might have hooked up on that. Ooh. Was in the right zone though. all kinds of little little fish in the shallows here also appear to be stuck on the bottom of my canoe oh I see my I see my lure over there I got caught on uh, oh there's a bass I got caught on some uh, pond lily weeds. The old rootstocks from last year, they're probably really tough. Let's get in there a little bit closer. I don't know what I was thinking. I, I saw, oh, Pike just darted right out from. Uh, where I'm stuck. You like the commotion here. So there's pike around. And I guess they're interested. There's another bass. He's too big for that pike to eat. I guess that's why he's not scared. polarized glasses on so I don't know if you'll see what I see but I see a few bass here a uh, little pike over there and most of those pike were just in this zone here so I'll try a few more casts there's a bunch of uh, bunch of bait fish and uh, all those bass and a few pike and I am catching weeds even though they're hardly even grown yet that's uh that's my luck try that again I don't usually fish this end in the uh, summer because it's too shallow and too weedy there's a nice drop off, like a rocky, bouldery uh, patch over to the side here. I usually troll that. I usually do all right for pike there. But maybe the guy in the kayak was right. Maybe they just started biting today. The toads are so noisy. They're like the only thing making noise out here. Well, I heard some woodpeckers earlier. Pileated woodpecker and, and uh, something else. Oh, all the big fish are uh, jumping over there. Maybe there's something, something worth casting at. No 
follow on that one. I'll try a few more and uh, I'll tune back in if I catch something. Just came down the river a bit, but I'm going to stop here. I see some more ferns. I'll scope out this patch, um, but where I pulled the canoe up, there's a bear track right there. From sometime in the last couple of days, I guess. There it is, there too. So, bear tracks, uh, my boot prints, and then here there's raccoon working their way along the shore. It's a pretty busy spot. Yeah, I probably picked another pound here, so now it's on my list of spots to revisit. It's getting kind of late in the day, it's five o'clock. I still have quite a bit of paddling to do to get home, so I'll probably... Uh, get back on the water and then I'll do a little bit of trolling on my way back so hopefully I get to check back in with a pike and if not I'll check back in for a wild food meal look at these guys trying to be all sneaky quiet here a couple of little goslings let those geese Well, there they all are pretty cleaned up, so, and it's so late, uh, 9.30, it's dark out, so I think what I'm going to do is refrigerate these, and I'm going to blanch them tomorrow, freeze them up, and I'll cook some in the morning. Alright, let's get some of this processing work done, so I got some water on the go here to blanch those fiddleheads and i've got some important coffee here to fire me up this morning getting a pan heated up this is uh hope you don't mind that that's a little burger fat i love reusing fat um, for cooking so we're going to cook some fiddleheads with eggs this morning and we're going to blanch some for freezing we're going to this is tricky with one hand. Uh, butter some coffee. I always thought buttered coffee was a weird thing until I tried it. And now it's like my favorite thing. Some maple syrup from the maple bush. Mmm, can you smell it? Let that melt in there. Give a little spoon assist here. Mm. We're going to want to blanch these for about two minutes in boiling water. I'll scoop them out, drain them, and then I'm going to package them up in freezer bags. And over here, what we're going to do, we're going to wait for this to get hot. We're going to throw some fiddles and fiddleheads in here. Uh, maybe with some garlic and then uh, some eggs. All right, here we go. Well, I had garlic in mine, but when I opened the fridge, I had leeks. So we're gonna leak these fiddleheads and I'm gonna chop them up. I don't know if I can do this with one hand. I might have to set the camera down. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Almost there. Ah, yeah. Look at that chopper. My sister's got me this for my uh, birthday last year. And it chops pretty nice. It's better with two hands, but uh, here we go. Got leeks, got fiddleheads. I did the best cleaning job I could on these. Late into the night. After a long day outside in the heat. Pan's starting to get hot. Not hot enough. Almost there. Okay. There we go. That's what we want here. A little bit of sizzle. Oh yeah. There's 
not look. Okay, looking good. Instagram worthy, maybe. There's a uh, smile and two eyes and green curly hair. The water's almost up to a boil here, so I'm going to start blanching soon. And I realized I don't have any small freezer bags. I just have the really big ones, so I guess I'm going, going to do some big packs. Here's what I got. Here we are, some semi-crispy uh, little heads. Mmm, a little bit crunchy. Fatty, buttery. Kind of a, like a curly Brussels sprout with a lighter flavor. And then the leeks. Mmm, they sweeten up so nice when you cook them. And eggs, which are like a gift from the gods. The chicken gods. Really good breakfast. My water's out of boil, so we're going to take a big scoop of this, drop it in there, boil two minutes, scoop them out, set them in here to drain, pour cold water over them to bring their temperature down, leave them to drain, and then once they're drained, bag them up in some big freezer bags. There we go. changed my water out because after three uh, three runs through it was looking pretty dark. I think it's the um, leftover papers give a lot of color to the water. Um, you can see them kind of draining out the bottom of my sink. A lot of the little tiny ones that got left on, um, they come off in this whole process so that works out pretty well. And I'm bagging them up. Five cups to the bag. I'm going to label them. Five cups of fiddleheads. Put the date on there and I'll probably end up with four bags so 20 cups which is uh five liters that's a pretty good haul of fiddleheads for a day paddling on the water cooking in the sun having some fun and good little meal to boot that's what's left of it right there nothing so i hope that was uh interesting for you guys and maybe helpful if you haven't picked fiddleheads before these are the ostrich fern fiddleheads the brown paper on them is really kind of the identifying feature and then the habitat that they live in which is moist areas um, around here usually growing under um, like along riverbanks sort of under ash trees and uh, red maples uh, probably different in your area but um, lots of good resources online you can look it up get some information about it and I'll see you on the next video actually which is probably going to be related to this guy here the Mengrills pot so a little teaser there um, this is kind of a cast aluminum uh, pressure cooker style pot that you can use on the stovetop uh, or on a campfire, on a fire fire or on coals or on a gas stove. So uh, I got that from Men Grills. I'm going to be trying that out. Maybe going to do a beef stew. They've got some uh, good looking recipes on their website. So my first try is going to be with uh, beef stew and I'll probably be doing that in the next couple of days. So you'll see that video come out probably a week after this video comes out. I'll catch you on the next one. Be resourceful, be resilient. See you around.